Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live broadcast. Last week, I talked down. I talked down. We're off to a great start. Last week, I talked to you all about Lightroom. I spent about two hours sharing tips and tricks of everything Lightroom. And during that, a couple of you had the suggestion of following up that workshop with one about building a website for photographers. And I thought, that sounds like a pretty good idea. I need something to keep myself sane right now. So let me put that together. Right down below this video is a link to a free handout. Um, you don't even have to put your email in. You just click it and it opens up and download it. It's got some of the notes that I'll be working from. This is gonna be shorter, a little bit looser. I'm not an expert in all things website. Uh, I used to be, but I've gotten out of that a little bit. But I know what you need to do to build a beautiful website. I've got some ideas. I've got some experience with different places to build, some that are very affordable and some that get a little bit more expensive depending on your needs. And when I sent out this call or the sent out this um, topic, I did ask you to submit your website. If you go to photorec.tv slash photo web, all one word, uh, there's a spot for you to click and submit your website for review. So during this, I'll be sharing some tips and tricks, taking a deep dive look at a couple of different places that I recommend, and also um, reviewing some of your websites. I won't be able to get to all of the ones, but hopefully I'll be able to come back at some point in the future and give you some additional feedback. If you're watching this and you're a Photo Enthusiast Network member, thank you, thank you very much. Um, anytime you would like feedback on your website, you're welcome to post it in our community forum or on Facebook, um, or just send it to one of us. And I, you know, we never published out that that's one of the benefits, but it certainly should be one of the benefits. And I'd be happy to take a look at your website and offer you some suggestions and advice. So um, if it doesn't get touched on during this topic, uh, during this workshop, of course, you can do that. I also want to go a little bit slower than I did in Lightroom from the fact that I, I want to check in on the chat from time to time. I didn't as much in the Lightroom. I just kind of like gave and gave and gave. And every once in a while, I did see questions and Roy so nicely collected those. But I'd like to have a few more conversations with you all during the course of this workshop. And I will say that part of me, in the back of my mind, when somebody said, oh, you should show us how to build a website for photographers, I thought, well, that's great. Squarespace sponsors me. I can talk about how wonderful Squarespace is. And I am going to show Squarespace some. And you can save 10% off your purchase of a domain package, website, gallery, whatever you're going to build at Squarespace by going to squarespace.com slash TV. But there are some really good, strong alternatives out there that I highly recommend. So um, please know that my opinion of each of these packages is quite unbiased. Um, and, and that includes Squarespace. I have personally built my website on Squarespace, but that doesn't mean for just a kind of typical photographer that it's the best or everything you need. So we're gonna look at some of those other options as well, but there are links for that information right down below in the handout as well. Thank you so much for everybody who's joining us in chat. Really love to see these numbers and love for you all to say, hi, how are you doing, where you are. Gordon already has a question about watermarking all photos on a website, yes or no. If you're going to ask it like that, Gordon, I'm just going to say no. But I address that in the handout that's linked right down below this video. And we'll talk about it some in the course of this workshop. We're actually going to start this workshop in Lightroom. I know not all of you use Lightroom, but the tips, tricks, and tools that I'm going to talk about in Lightroom um, can be applied to any other program you use as well. And it is the most critical part of building the website. That is the selection of your photos and the prep work to figure out how you're going to set this up and get them all organized. All right. so. And also, as Roy has said, but I'll say out loud if you're not reading the chat, if you've got a question, it's nice if you put a big Q in front of it. That kind of highlights it a bit. Roy will be looking for those, and he'll be adding them to the question document that I'll definitely look at from time to time as we go along, even if I miss some of the chat, because there's enough of you that it's starting to slide by a little faster than I can read while I'm talking and drinking tea at the same time. I'm so talented. I do hope everyone is safe and healthy with all of their friends and family safe and healthy as well. Uh, obviously, a lot of us are 
stuck at home, um, and uh, I thought this time would be good to try to make it as useful as possible. Okay, so we're going to jump into Lightroom to start. Yes, this is about building a website, but I want to start in Lightroom. So we're going to go uh, to Lightroom, and we are looking at, for those who have followed along, you know I have two main catalogs. It's so funny, I gesture at the camera even though I've now made it just the screen. I've got two main catalogs. A catalog that holds all of my old files, everything from last year back, and a catalog that holds my current work. And the reason I do that is the catalog that holds my current work is where I spend most of my time editing and working as I'm adding new photos constantly and it travels with me all around the world. The old catalog that is all of the past pictures, well, that's nice to have one place to go to to access all of my work. And um, you, it gets big, and I have certainly noticed over this last couple of days as I've, I've put my own best pictures together for one of the first times in a while. It's kind of embarrassing to say, but prior to this, um, I haven't. Let's go back so you can see me a little bit. I know you miss me. Uh, I haven't um, really taken the time to say, here is a collection of my very best work and put it on the web. I've done it piecemeal here or there and tried out different things, but I said, well, I'm putting this workshop together. I should do this myself. Um, and I really noticed just how slow this archive catalog is. You do any kind of editing, any kind of rating or reviewing or moving pictures around, and it becomes quite painful. But it is nice to have just one place to go to pull all of these images together. And that's what we're going to start with. So the very first thing you need to ask yourself is, how do I want to organize this? And that's going to inform what you do here in Lightroom. And I've got a couple examples for you in the handouts. Um, locations is one way to categorize it. Categories or type of photography is another. So some examples, maybe you are kind of a nature photographer. You've got some nice wildlife. You've got some nice landscapes. And then maybe you've got another category of astrophotography. That's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of me. Um, and that's how you can split that up. So then when you're in Lightroom, you need to start looking for these pictures. But one of the challenges of doing this workshop that I was thinking about is, well, many of you have very different reasons for building a website. Some of it is just to display your very best work to your friends and family. Say, hey, look, here is what I have. And the reason why I do think it is important to have a website, even if you're doing that, I mean, Instagram can kind of do that. 500 pics, Flickr, I don't like Flickr anymore. Um, they can do that, certainly, but that's not your space. You don't control anything that happens around your pictures. You don't know whose picture is next in the feed. It's just not yours. Um, and I just like for you to have your own space. So even if it is just to share the world, no other purpose than that, I think having your own space is nice. Uh, if your goal is to convince clients to hire you for to capture their wedding or um, you know family photos or real estate, any one of those, your goal and the way your website's going to look is going to be a good bit different. I touch on this some uh, over the course of this and we talk a little bit. And, and if you're shooting clients, you might need to have a whole section of the website dedicated to clients, allowing them to access their photos as well. So we will cover um, all of that. But for me and for the purpose of this workshop, mostly I'm talking about just kind of really nicely sharing your work with the world, which can also have the benefit of, of getting some clients. So I've started with collections. And I didn't talk about collections at all during the Lightroom workshop. Um, we just too many other things to talk about. But collections are really powerful, especially smart collections. If you've never used them, oh, they're great. The simplest way to think of collections is to think of them as a virtual folder. Now, again, so let's step back to my Lightroom training real quick. I think your folder structure in Lightroom should be the exact same as the folder structure outside Lightroom. And in a way, it, it has to be because those folders, those exist on your hard drive. When you create a folder in Lightroom, you are creating a folder on your hard drive or an external hard drive on a drive. And so those two things should match and you should keep them as closely matched as possible. There shouldn't be a bunch of extra folders outside of Lightroom that Lightroom doesn't know about and all that messiness. 
But that has some limitations. Let's say, for instance, you want to have your best landscape work. Well, maybe you have two great pictures from Yosemite National Park in one folder, and then you took this awesome trip to New Zealand and you have five pictures that are absolutely love and you want to share with the world. Well, do you make a best landscape folder and then make copies of those? No, 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 that's terrible. Because then you're duplicating your images. And what if you later go back and say, oh, Toby showed me how to do this really cool edit trick. Wait, which one am I going to edit? Am I going to edit the one that's in the best, fold, best landscapes folder or am I going to edit the one that's in the original folder? So uh, what you need to do is use make use of collections because you can have a best landscapes collection. And it doesn't care what folder those files are in. It doesn't even care what drive. It'll pull them all into one very nice location. And so let's talk a little bit about collections. There are easy ways to create collections. On the drop down next to your collections here, you can say create collection. And then it says, what do you want to call this collection? And you can say my very best pictures. Or, well, not pictures. Um, it'd be better if you called it something useful like um, best landscapes. And that name is already in use, so I'm just going to call it Best Landscape Photos. That's a little redundant, but... Uh, and then include selected photos. Well, it automatically has this photo up here grabbed. We're, we don't want to do that. So let's just create. So now, somewhere in this list, uh, I just created Best Landscape Photos right here. There are no photos in that collection. So now I need to add some. There's a couple different ways you can add photos to a collection. Uh, and uh, first, let's come back to a folder. Let's come to 2019 and say, show me all of my very, my five star pictures in 2019 uh, or four and five star. All right, so here's a nice landscape photo. I can drag and drop it to that best landscapes photos folder. That's pretty useful. Now, we can also set this as a target collection. Only one collection can be set as a target at a time. What that does is assigns a keyboard shortcut. It puts a little plus sign so you now know it's the target collection. And it assigns the keyboard shortcut B, as in boy, to add to that collection. So let's come back to the 2019. Let's come back to four star images. And uh, here's one, sure, B. And it tells you nicely that it's added to the target collection. Here's another one, B. I can do more than one at once. I can select these three together and hit B. And they all automatically go into this target collection called Best Landscape Photos. There they are, six, six of them. So that's one way you can do it. This is a kind of an after the fact way. I've got a better way for you and that you should do this as you're working. So smart collections are another form of collection. A smart collection is a dynamic collection that's constantly scanning your photos for any criteria that match the search terms you've set up and will automatically slurp those photos into their collection. So for instance, I have a smart collection called Best Landscapes. You can see here that it's got a little asterisk next to it. That lets you know that it's a smart collection. If I right click on it and say edit smart collection, we can see what it is. Well, there's its name and then to be part of this collection, think of it as a cool guys club. Cool people's, not guys, sorry. Cool people's club. It's got to have at least a four star rating or higher. And it has to have a keyword of landscape. All right. Now, there are currently no photos that match that criteria. Because for this example, I removed those. I haven't done this as often as I should. And that is nicely label this stuff and name this stuff. I can't tell you how important you do. You do a little bit of prep work up front and it makes this process so much easier. Also, I've been doing the one on one tech support uh, with people over the last couple of weeks as they've had more time and I've announced to you all that I do that. If you just need some one on one tech support where I take control of your computer, show you what I'm doing, explain to you, help you find lost files. You can just email me, toby at photorec.tv. But the more I've done that, the more I know, and I want you to know, please be organized on import. 
please rename files on import. It's huge because it makes it so much easier. If you, you know you've got some beautiful shots at Yosemite, but you've been to Yosemite five times. How do you look through all those folders? If you've renamed on import Yosemite, they're easy to find. So keep that in mind, all right? Just a little PSA. OK, so let's come back to my uh, folder here. And let's go and say four stars or higher. And here is a photo that I would like in that smart collection called Best Landscapes. All I need to do is come over here and add land, not ladybug, landscape. And look, magic. No, why didn't it show up yet? Enter. There we go. Magic. Now, Best Landscape Smart Collection has one in it. Now you think, well, it was easier to hit B than it was to keyword this file. Yes, but ideally, you are keywording this file landscape when it comes in or shortly after it comes in or when you edit it and it starts to really respond well to editing and you're like, oh, this is a nice one. I want to make sure it is categorized properly. You don't need to say Best Landscape. You're going to do that with your star rating system. You just need to say landscape. And that there then applies it. And I can do more than one at a time. Uh, let's select all of these and add landscape. If I hit enter now, boom, they're all going to get added. I did not show you this cool little spray can last week. And if you just, if you want that, free two hours packed content of Lightroom training. That's just on my channel. You can just go watch. But I get this little spray can. I pick it up. Landscape. Now, any that I click on will get that. And if you watch in that bottom left corner, those numbers are going to increase as I assign this. Actually, as soon as I picked it up because they were already selected, they took that. And now in Best Landscapes, I've got eight pictures. So that's how you can use Smart Collections. And it also is points to the fact that it is important to do your ratings as well. And, you know, again, I think when I told people, and I have told people in the past that, well, I'm very selective with my five star. When I say, show me my five star photos from 2012 to 2019, um, it is a pretty dang small number. And I've noticed that it even needs to be updated a little bit more. There's a couple that could come out as my opinion of my photography and how good that photo is in relation to the body of my work changes. You think this, Toby, is a very small number of pictures out of, what, 332,000? Yes, but you want to be selective. And it's just so easy to walk back and say, all right, well, OK, let's open it up. Let's go to four star then boom, there are those four star pictures. And now I can start to easily kind of figure out. If you're, if you're handing out five stars like candy at Halloween, when it's your turn to sit down here and figure out what your best work is to show online, you're going to be doing a lot of additional filtering. And that's silly. So um, keep that in mind. I think uh, I'm just, I just am liking being very selective with that. So I set up, before I really developed the smart collections, I set up a collection set called Best Photos. And then within that, another set called Travel. And this is where that kind of organization comes in. And I will be dead honest with you, I don't know if I love this. But this is what I came up with for me. You know, I've been to enough destinations that I think and have enough pictures from each of those destinations that they should have their own gallery. You can see there pretty nicely how many pictures are in each of those galleries. Anywhere from the lowest Cuba 7, that's actually a little false. There's a low number in this because I lost the ratings and rankings from that gallery of Cuba. So there's a few more that have been added. But you know, somewhere between 10 and 30 pictures in general. Again, my goal with this website is to show, showcase and share my very, very best work. So um, 10 to 30, I think, is, is a pretty good number. Uh, you might feel differently. And depending on what you're showing, you might feel differently. But I'll caution you, again, even if you're an amazing photographer, I think you want to be 
very selective in what you show. All right. And the other thing that I don't love is that I do have some overlaps. So for instance, some of my best landscapes, of course, are found within these local uh, folders that, that there are locations. So I don't love that. We'll see how that translates. So here I have, and what, you know, what's nice is that those pictures can exist across these different folders very easily because these are collections and they're all virtual. And so this nesting system works great. And then I thought, well, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to just export these, boom, as photos inside each of these folders with collection names? And I went up to Lightroom, File, Export, and custom settings, can you do anything with adding folders, anything here? No, 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 you can't. Lightroom, you're disappointing me. But you know who comes to the rescue? If you haven't heard of this guy, uh, you are missing out. Let's open, nope, not that one. Let's open this one and go here. Jeffrey Freeld, he has been a Lightroom plugin developer for 8 billion years. And he is linked here at the bottom of the page one of the handout, which Roy put in the chat, and it's also linked right down below this video. Tons of fantastic plugins. They're all donationware. That means that you can get it and uh, use it for a very long period of time without paying any money. And then if you really find it useful, then you should send him a dollar or two dollars, three dollars, uh, you know, something, whatever you think is fair. I have used some of his plugins for literally over a decade. Um, and Data Explorer is one cool one. But the one that I wanted to talk about right now specifically is Collection Publisher. It allows you to set up a collection that you can then publish to a folder system. So look at this. Let me open up my Finder. I've done this. I set this all up. I'm not going to show it. His directions walk you through it very, very nicely. And if we go to my Pictures folder, we have my best photos. And look, inside that we have best wildlife, best people, astro, landscape, and then that travel. And then there they are. I put underscores in front of some because I needed them to come up high in the list. The old trick, but it worked. So that created this really nice folder here where all of these pictures are sitting ready to be uploaded to the web. And I was able to decide what export level I wanted them to, to export at. How it, uh, how it all came to be is down here in the publishing services, which I don't ever really use, but is here. And if I forget, it is also available for Smugbug and Zenfolio to have published services where you don't even need to leave Lightroom to get your content directly to those, uh, we'll call them hosts, services, if you will. So I created a publishing system called Best Photos. And um, no, sorry, it's this one. And, uh, you know, all you need to do is hit publish now or mark to publish. If I go in and I say, oh man, look, I missed the dust spot or hey, I need to update the crop here or I need to take a picture out. It's going to update those folders for me. And you have tons of options whether or not if you delete a picture here, do you want it to delete when you update? Uh, probably. Uh, if you make any changes, all of that is, is options and it's pretty slick and awesome. But to keep this moving along, I think we're just going to wrap up there and say, that's what I decided, and that's what I ended up with. Now, size of pictures. What size to export? It really depends on where your photos are going. So we're going to talk in a little bit about Smug Mug and Zenfolio and Pixie Set, which I think are three good, solid options. They're really considered kind of gallery services first and foremost, and website second. And the benefit of that being a gallery is you can put up your pictures at the absolute highest quality. Big, gorgeous, full resolution, full like 90, 95 JPEG quality. They're going to be probably 20 or 30 megabytes big, but that gallery is going to take them and they're going to automatically make smaller sizes for you. And this is great too if you're working with clients and you want to be able to put up the images for them to download. You don't have to worry about all of that. These gallery services do this for you automatically and then resize and reproduce that image in a variety of images to serve up your website in a nice and speedy manner. That's cool. We like that a lot. Uh, you really don't need to worry. And 
One of the other benefits I write down here, Zenfolio and SmugMug, and I really like the way Zenfolio does this, it'll take your raw files too and match them up. So when you upload a gallery, if some of those pictures in there are the best you've ever created, and that's kind of the premise we're working from here, right? Then it will also um, allow you to update the raws or upload raws as a backup. This shouldn't be your only one backup because we're talking about you're not uploading everything here. That's not a great way to work. But your very best work, why not have this additional backup where if you go back to Zenfolio in five years and you're like, oh man, that picture, that snow leopard, I love that picture. Let me, let me edit it a little bit more. Lightroom's improved its quality of editing. I've improved my quality of editing. You go to Lightroom and for whatever reason you've lost the raw file, well, there it is in Zenfolio attached to the original. So that's pretty cool. Um, I would definitely uh, suggest you take a look at that. Gordon had the question about watermarking and this is where I address it on this. So let's take a moment and address that. Uh, if you are putting up big, beautiful images for the world to see and for you to share with them for the no other purpose than really sharing, I think watermarks are, pretentious might be a little too harsh. I just don't think that they're necessary. They're so easy to remove. They, they don't keep people from stealing your work. Um, and they just don't do anything useful other than distract most people who are looking at your work and there's this watermark. That's my opinion. If you are, and, and I, I have had this example in the past, I, way back when I lived in Vermont and I was a beginning photographer, I would take any job that came my way and there was local horse competitions, jumping and trail riding, and the organizers couldn't or wouldn't pay me anything, but the people who are part of the, uh, the, the whole deal would want their photos. So I would make sure I got everybody's photos and then they would come to my website and buy them. If I didn't put big watermarks on them, what many of them would do, not many, some, is uh, download the picture, just screenshot it and uh, put it up as their profile picture, put it on their Facebook. So I didn't get any money from that. That's a bummer because that was my only way to make an income from these events. So by putting a fairly obnoxious watermark across these images and offering a very reasonable digital download, I was able to make a few dollars, which I think was fair. Um, so if you are selling this work, um, or if you're a stock photographer and you have this work available to buy in other places and you, know, you want to display at large, then, then some sort of watermark might be useful in those cases. But so often they're just more distracting than not. And if you don't fall into that use case, then I don't think that they are super useful. Remember Lightroom does allow you to watermark on export. Uh, it's important though, uh, most of the good website services and galleries that you're working with, especially Zenfolio and SmugMug, will allow you to watermark uh, through their system, which is really nice because if the client says, yes, I do want to buy that for two bucks, you don't have to put up an unwatermarked version. They can access that through the system. So that's a very nice uh, setup that will, that will work pretty well for that. All right. So moving through this, first thing you needed to do was gather all of these pictures together. And, and the more organized you are, the easier this is moving forward. And you really need to kind of think about. And what we'll do is we'll review a few websites in a minute. And maybe hopefully those will give you some additional ideas about how you might organize your work. The next thing you need to do is write a small biography about you. Even if your purpose is to showcase with the world just your favorite images, uh, you should tell a little background. How did you get into photography? Are you interested in it? If you are looking to gather clients, I think it's critical that you have a strong written biography. It's part of your resume. This is your gallery and your website is your resume to your clients. Your work is going to speak for itself to a certain degree, but then through your biography is where they're going to connect with you a little bit more. Just because you have pretty pictures doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily want to hire you. But if they see in your um, biography that you have a human side, and I put a couple of suggestions in here, some you know, key terms that I think you should talk about in your biography if you're working with clients. Let them know that you're a patient person, that you value their time in both you know, being punctual and um, or like if you're doing family sessions, 
you know, let them know that a crying baby, you're not going to be like, I can't work with this and stomp off. No, because if that's, well, I hope you aren't like that. That's not good. Um, you know, you're going to let them know that, yeah, I understand. Sometimes babies have bad days. Sometimes they have good days. I'm going to work with you and make sure that this all goes smoothly. I don't want you to be stressed over your children's, you know, um, behavior or whether or not they get hangry and I bring snack Snickers or something like that, you know, um, that allows them to really kind of connect with you. So that I think is an important part of your biography. Also, and this is ironic coming from me because my grammar is, is okay, but my writing is not great. But you really take some time, proofread it, send it to a few friends, especially ones that are a little bit more um, grammar Nazis, the good kind, you know, that are going to let you know, say, hey, because again, somebody out there might be looking at this and saying, this race is great. Oh, God, they're Writing is terrible, though. Is this how they, you know, write contracts? Is that really going to happen? Probably not. And some of you might be like, well, I don't want to work with that person. Well, maybe they're just having a bad day and you just don't want anything to set them off. So really take some time and make sure that that is all written nicely. So. Um, and then decide where you want to build a website. So now we're getting to the part where um, we want to talk about some actual places to build websites and what I found over the last couple of days of researching and what I've known about for years and years and years. Let's, are there any questions that pertain to anything I've talked about so far? Gordon wants to know, how about a signature? Um, so Gordon, I see a signature as a watermark as well. Uh, and that uh, is basically the same. Now, if you want to... Uh, digitally mat your image. That is where you present the image, not by itself, but with a little kind of digital mat around it, border, white border, black border, or some colors that go well with it. We talk a lot about that in the Photo Enthusiast Network and put a signature at the bottom of that. That can be nice. Um, I would say you have to be consistent with it. And I don't want to go back to pretentious, but if you have all of your images with that on them, uh, on your gallery, it does feel kind of pretentious. I really think the best way to display your work online for people is big, clean images. Nothing fancy extra. Let the work speak for itself. Um, all of the photographers that I admire display their work online like that. So um, that's my own opinion. If you really like to put a signature on there, you can do that. If you're talking about selling your work and signing it, well, then that's a service where you make sure that the work gets shipped to you first, you sign it, and then ship it to them. Or you could put a digital signature on there. I've, I've never done that. I spend the time. So, And Gordon, you want to know if there's any other Lightroom, uh, other tools other than Lightroom for organizing out there. Um, Bridge, built into Photoshop, but that probably doesn't help you because if you have Photoshop, you have Lightroom and vice versa probably. Um, I don't know Adobe... Um, Photoshop Elements has some organization built into it as well. DxO, but most of those are really um, just kind of working through your own finder system. I think Lightroom, as far as all of these tools built together, I, I really like. If anybody in chat has other suggestions for really good organization tools, uh, let's hear them. But, okay. All right. Where to host your website? So the first place I want to talk about is Adobe Portfolio. Since I'm talking about Lightroom, uh, most of you probably have the Adobe Creative Cloud package. You know, you little Adobe Creative Cloud, you pay $9.99 a month, you get Adobe uh, Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop, you might have some other programs. Well, did you know that that comes with it a website that is actually quite nice? No additional charge. And really, not a whole lot of limitations. So you go to portfolio.adobe.com, and it is completely free if you're already paying for the Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop bundle. You can see my example at tobiasgelson.com slash myportfolio. I haven't connected to a domain, but you can. You can even actually have five separate websites with separate addresses all set up for this $9.99 deal. I haven't found any limits on um, amount of content that you can put up. Uh, I didn't look for that, I'm realizing now. But let's just show you a little bit about how this can look. So, um, well, actually, let's, let's open up the other 
the other page first that has, nope, it's not that one. Nope, it's not that one. Okay, let's go to the actual one it is. What did I say it was? It's uh, tobiasgelston.com slash, no, sorry, myportfolio.com. painful watching me type. Okay, so the, uh, the page, the system that I currently have set up is you land on a splash page, and I don't like that. But I was just seeing what this looked like as an example. So you can have this um, display with a big image on the right, or it can take up the whole page. And from here, we can go into my portfolio, little byline. Um, and then, of course, we have links to my social media, Instagram, YouTube, and email me. But let's click my portfolio. And then here we are on this kind of half done system. I've got a wildlife link and a Tanzania link currently. Home will take us back to that splash page, which honestly, as I said, I don't really love because then you only have one link to go to from here. You really kind of want to have these often up here. And under work, I'm just trying out this other work and other display of just my very favorite work. So this is kind of a rough look. I'm realizing now that I should have set this up a little bit more. But we've got our contact as well with the little contact form. It all looks quite professional and nice. It does have this powered by Adobe portfolio on it. But overall, I'm pretty happy. And the Tobias Gelson takes you back to the work and home takes you back to home. The back end of this is right here. We've got pages, integration, themes, and settings. Let's look at pages briefly. That's where we just were. And yes, you can even have client access. This I just typed this in, but you can password protect uh, certain galleries so that if you want only the clients to have access to that. Um, but And we can move that down in the list and link so you can see that it appears there. And then we have My Photography. And let's add a new page to the My Photography section. So we click plus, and it's going to be, uh, we can create a custom page or a Lightroom album. So there is very nice integration, as we would expect and hope, with an Adobe portfolio to Adobe Lightroom as well. We can just create a gallery, which creates a grid of sub pages. Or let's just create a page, custom page, and let's call this uh, Iceland. And it's going to be inside my photography. And I'm going to create this page. And now once I'm on the page, I can click Image. And I've got this nice folder structure all ready to go. Actually, it's not there. It is in a best. And um, Travel, Iceland. And I can select these images and open. And they're just going to start to automatically upload to this website. And I'm pretty impressed with the speed at which it takes. Uh, and it just really kind of works quite nicely. Uh, now, you can see that it has, by default, just stuck one picture on top of the other in a big, beautiful format. You might think, well, that doesn't quite work for me. So you can reorder on that page. And you can also, somewhere else within this, is it just under themes? Uh, you can change the look. Now, you are fairly limited in your customization under the Portfolio Adobe. Here are the different themes that you have available to you. I'm currently using this Thomas, which just kind of makes these big blocks, no spaces between them. No other real content on here, although you can edit it a little bit. Um, so each theme is customizable to a degree. But you can see that there are, what, that's a total of 12, 12 themes. Um, and they all look pretty similar. I mean, you know, there's some differences. But they also all look quite nice, clean, and modern. 
Um, I don't really have a problem with any of these themes. I think they look pretty nice. And let's just see if we say use, let's, let's, let's be a little bit more dramatic. Let's use this rose theme because I like a little bit more text if I wanted to put my bio on there. So we come back to our pages and we have our photography page. Here it is now. This is just added as part of the theme, taking my name. Scroll down to see my work. And now it, here is this Iceland page in wildlife in Tanzania. And if I click this, then it's going to update and have this little menu on the side now. And scroll on down. There's my work. And again, not a ton of options here. But you have a little bit more about... Um, the navigation and the main. So if you wanted to get that smaller or larger, you could. They are smart enough to make a mobile friendly website. Um, so really, I find very little to complain about with this portfolio if you're already paying for the Adobe Creative Cloud. It's pretty clean. The only real complaint is somewhat limited customization options. All right. So um, we'll see. Now, um, is my box, who's, who's complaining about the box being in the way? Um, use the image to a corner instead of in the image, please. Well, I can just move it away for a while. Um, but it's always hard to figure out a place where it's never going to be in the way. OK, so uh, here we go. Overall, pretty happy with it. There are, oh, we already looked at themes, sorry. The integrations. Um, you can connect it to Behance, uh, which is Adobe's kind of simpler portfolio space, a light, uh, Lightroom as well. Uh, it'll bring in albums. Uh, this is the other Lightroom, the Lightroom that shall not be named that I don't care for as much, but because it stores your images in the cloud, it will connect already. And then the stock website, uh, if you have any uh, stock images up for sale. And again, I just want to stress that I was just trying this out and I really don't like a splash page that limits you and forces you to click an extra button to get in and see your work. I think um, everybody should see more of your work than just one click right here. And it's just so easy to say update the live site and preview it. And under settings, show you real quick, if you've got a domain, you can connect it. You can also change. So I said the site domain is tobiaskelston.myportfolio. That's completely free. You can change this up to, I changed it once because they gave you some you know, little one that's got random numbers and letters in it. Uh, you can change it several times if you want. You're limited though. So even you know a domain does cost some money, but I certainly would, again, if you are working with any kind of clients, it's nice to have your own domain. There's analytics built in, search optimization as well. So there is good SEO, and that is critically important if you're trying to find clients. So this really gives you a lot of uh, what I think is good. All right. Any suggestions or questions about that? Um, nope. I will move on and talk about the next one, and that is Pixie Set. Pixie Set has been around for quite a while, right here. And I have to say that the free version is fairly limiting. Um, but it really is quite nice. And I found it to be the fastest and easiest and most customizable of any of the other ones. But the limit is only 100 images. So let's go to my website. Here we are. I've added the PhotoRec TV logo. Um, and my landing page is my very favorite images and a pretty select number of them. Just those right there on this home page. And you have links to more information. Again, completely free. Uh, and you can connect a domain to it as well. But once you want to do anything more, like, sorry, connecting a domain does cost money. Um, it charges, what, $12 a month. That's paid annually as well. Uh, that allows you to connect a domain and then an unlimited number of photos. The free version, you are limited to just 100. But I love the look, the display, and as I said, I found it really, really easy. So the way I have this one set up, as you can see over here, is my kind of admin site. And over here is the display side. 
And so you can see Portfolio Hides, Wildlife Landscape, and Land of Fire and Ice. We click that. And there they are, Wildlife Landscape, Land of Fire and Ice. And I click that, and it will take me to this gallery. Maybe. Let's click over here. Um, now, once you're on a single gallery, it's going to look very similar to my front page. But you can change the layouts by just simply clicking these little layout buttons right here. And you click the plus, and you can add more text and text headings. All of that stuff here links to other information. Really clean, easy to work with. And this is also where you can see that I am struggling with that. Uh, this is an example that they gave you here. Where did I just find that? Oh, on the portfolio. You can make these link to yours. Um, but I'm struggling with this organization of having two different drop downs. So I need to decide personally what I want to do about that but it's all right there. Does have a blog as well. And we're not going to talk a whole lot about a blog other than to say if you want people to come back to your website frequently, a blog is the way to do it. A blog allows you to put text and pictures out there in a way that your search engines are going to pick them up and share them with the world. If you just put up a gallery of images, I don't care how beautiful they are, people aren't just going to come along and find them. If they do, you send them out to friends and family. Look, I got a new website. It's got all of these beautiful pictures on it. Let's come back to me. I got this website. I got all these beautiful pictures on it. Somebody's going to come and look. Great. Are they going to come back? Probably not. If they looked at your pictures, why do they need to come back? A blog is going to give them a reason to come back. Hey, every Friday I post a new picture and a behind the scenes of it. Or I talk about this travel. Or more importantly, if you're um, working with clients, a blog is an, a kind of an extended resume. Here I am busy. Here are these other people that hired me. Here was this wonderful wedding I shot that it was the most amazing thing. I cried. I could barely see through my camera because the ceremony was so moving. You don't have to get that cheesy. But you should show your personality and show your client's personality because as your clients, as potential clients come to you, they're going to read the biography, hopefully. Um, and if they're serious, they're probably going to come look at your blog or more likely they're going to find the blog first because of way search engines, maybe we should just say Google. The way Google works, it really puts a lot of emphasis on time and timeliness and how recent stuff was posted. And that's going to often filter higher up than some of your other more static parts of your website. So the blog is really the way for you to say to Google and to the world, hey, I'm alive. Hey, I'm producing work. Hey, come look at me. So. Uh, having a blog is nice. Every single one of the services that we're talking about today allows you to have a blog and combine photos with some type of text. So that's important. All right. So um, the limit for the free is only five blog posts for Pixie Set. So that's pretty dang limiting. You could delete old ones as you go, but really at that point. Um, so you can see here four of five posts remain upgrade. Uh, but you have this whole draft section. You've got a whole different design. So right now we're in the Avery theme. Here are the other themes. And again, Pixie Set is very kind of uh, photographers with clients focused. So there are a lot of really nice client tools and options available to you, not really in the free version, but in the, the more paid version as well. So. Um, I wonder if these other ones down here are not available to me because I don't pay. I'm going to assume that's what it is. But I thought the Avery uh, theme was very nice, very clean, and worked quite nicely. Um, the only really thing that I could say about it is it does get a little bit pricier. You're up to $28 a month to unlock the selling and client gallery options as well. So that starts to get pricey, but that is the cost of doing business. Um, so. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, if you are running a business, you should have a good, robust website that um, that works. The next one that I want to talk about is Zenfolio and Smug Mug. But before we do that, let's let's talk briefly about running your own. In my experience with that, so WordPress is an incredibly customizable option out there. If you're a person that likes to tinker, to spend a lot of time under the hood, so to speak, 
of your website. WordPress on a site a host that you choose is going to give you the ultimate customizability. I used to do that. It used to be fun to spend a lot of time tinkering. But then as I got busy with work and life, um, I really just wanted things to work. And I was willing to sacrifice some customization for that. And I'm talking about very detailed stuff. Like, let's say that you, you, you want to control down to the pixel level and have detailed CSS control. That's the cascading style sheets that go along with the HTML, all of that. And you want it to be exactly the way you want. That's an option. And in a lot of cases, those um, can be some of the most affordable uh, options because you can get a big bucket host and slap WordPress.org on there for free and you're good to go. But if you're sharing a lot of work, those images will start to add up. And also running and managing the whole selling side of things can be very expensive as well. So just keep that in mind. There is WordPress.com, which is uh, WordPress running on their servers, and you can sign up similar to Squarespace and Wix. Um, that gives you a bit more customization because there are all of these plugins, all these different galleries and themes out there ready to go that work quite nicely. But even with, um, it is going to be more work than one of these other sites. So it is a balance between uh, how much customization that they allow and how much flexibility you want and or desire and how much time you have to poke and prod it and, and make it your own thing. So um, just keep that in mind. Let's talk a little bit about Zenfolio and SmugMug. I have been a, a customer of both SmugMug and Zenfolio for many, many years. In the mid-2000s, SmugMug was the place that I put all of my family photos. But um, when I wanted to start selling work, it was actually when I started shooting many of those events, catering events and the horseback riding, that I wanted a really easy way to sell my work. And at the time, Smug Mug was more family friendly focused and it worked great for my family photos. It didn't work great for um, selling work. And Zenfolio had a really nice robust system. And so I switched over to Zenfolio and I've been a Zenfolio customer now for over a decade and very, very happy with them. Because they're a gallery system and a service, the back end is just built absolutely for photographers. Just makes it really, really easy to say, hey, I want a gallery. I want to put all of these pictures in it. And as I showed briefly, if you missed this earlier on, you can even set up publishing services within Lightroom that will automatically go to Zenfolio. So in Lightroom, you say, here are these pictures, one button press, boom, they end up on Zenfolio. And they even can be sunk back and forth. I th Actually, I should make sure that's true. I don't like to say things that aren't true. The, um, I believe the publishing services with Zenfolio is a two-way street. And so if you remove an image or update an image and republish, it will make sure that Zenfolio has the latest copy. Let's spend a few moments looking at Zenfolio now and talking a little bit about that. I will say that um, Zenfolio and SmugMug are very, very similar these days. Uh, I haven't been back into the back end of SmugMug much lately. I do think that they have maybe slightly nicer um, themes than Zenfolio. Zenfolios look a little dated to me, but, but it's there. Okay, so let's look at how I have this set up. So here we are on the back end of my Zenfolio All Photos Home. And you can see that I've got some uh, bits and pieces here. I just kind of kind of cleaned it up before this workshop. And what I've done is created a photography uh, folder. And within that photography folder are my kind of recent galleries. I've, on this one, you're seeing aerial and landscape, travel and wildlife. You can see here that travel is a folder icon. I can actually double click it. I know that's a little weird on the web. Uh, it won't be that way in the website. You double click it and then you can see that you have these galleries of Vietnam, America, New Zealand, Cuba, Antarctica, yada, yada, yada. Um, see, I don't like this consistency. These are all countries and then I get Paris I, I, and I need to figure this out. I do love a few of these Paris photos I have, but I don't know how to display them with the rest. Maybe combine them with Italy and do a Europe, but then technically isn't Iceland part of Europe, so shouldn't they all be together? This is personal problems to me, don't worry. 
Okay, over here on the left, you can see when I expanded it, you can see that I have these older galleries that have some images in them. I've now marked them old, but you can see the little linked raw files that are right there with them as well. So um, that is where you can go and find those files. Again, that's a nice kind of extra backup. It shouldn't be the backup, but it's an extra one. And so let's go into New Zealand for a minute. Again, a double click. And here it is. If I need to upload more images, I could just hit this upload. And this should look very much like a very nice gallery system. And that's exactly what it is. But built on top of this, you can have a website. So let's hit preview. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. OK. So now we're into their website builder. And here's what it looks like. And I actually have connected a domain to this a while back. Let's go to uh, the page where I'm not signed in and uh, just go to TobiasGelston.com. Not customize. OK, there it is. So I have a little, we're kind of on this landing page again, but I can go to better links than just one. So this, in my opinion, is, is better than your kind of splash page, as that other one was called way back in the Adobe. So we have photography which will take me in and show you these right here. Um, and the links are up here as well. Let's go back, though, just so you can see. There is a blog as well. I haven't been so updated on my blogs. The last two were um, 2014. So this is not something that I've really kept up with on the Zenfolio side of things. But you can have a blog here as well. There's contact, and there is a nice little form, and of course, links uh, to further uh, my social media sites and stuff like that. The about page, so you can put a little bio there, and your about. And then, of course, I've added a link to YouTube directly as well, and a footer that contains all of that information. All right? So I think that this is quite nice, but what I'm saying is that I don't love, let's go to that photography section. I don't love this look. This looks to me like a um, outdated website. So that's a downside to this. And I think if we go to themes, there's not a huge difference. You're talking about the colors, uh, really. And or maybe we want layout. Oh, look, full screen with photo. What happens if we say this? Full screen with layout and we go to photography now I just broke everything layout I want layout on this three layouts centered right yeah so see so again you are pretty limited in how these look um, so the back end is fantastic the front end is just okay they cost about fifty to sixty dollars a year so they're a bit more affordable, and they give you tons and tons of space. Most of those, both of those, I think, are unlimited in the amount of content you can upload to them. Let's go inside one of these galleries. It's just a single click when you're working on the website. So you can see here, and we have the you know the navigation over here as well. Or sorry, let's. This is what people would see here. The navigation at the top, and I just I don't love it, but buying photos, uh, the system built for that is fantastic. So really, the downside is themes maybe not as current and modern and clean as some of these other systems that I've looked at and liked. And Smug Mugs is, from what I can tell. Um, but now I don't want to switch back, personally. But you might want to take a look at Smug Mug. And both of these guys offer 14-day completely free trials. So you can go and upload a bit of stuff. And here's the good news. If you take the time, if you take the time in um, Lightroom to get this folder out, you write your little bio, you come here and you pop this content in. It's super easy to move from one to the other. Basically, it's the last 24 hours I spent yesterday just dropping my photos in these different places and taking a look at them and poking and prodding with all the little buttons. So um, that's Zenfolio. And then the last one that I want to talk a little bit about is Squarespace. And again, in the handout, I list, I, I show you, I didn't print it. The Pixie Set one did print, though. 
um, the cost and kind of the packages of each of them and the comparisons. But um, Squarespace starts at $12 a month, so that's $144 a year, and is one of the most customizable. But just a reminder, if you go to squarespace.com slash TV, you can save 10% off that purchase price. And I believe that's a lifetime savings. So um, what will that save you? About $14? Um, it's something over the course of a year. All right, so um, Squarespace back here. No. So let's go to my Squarespace. So as I said, I run photorec.tv on Squarespace. Not there. Uh, and I'm quite happy, but I want to show you the back end of Squarespace, and I've lost it. It's gone forever. This is embarrassing. Oh, down here. Here we go. Under my account. All right. So um, again, completely free, 14-day trial. You don't have to put any credit card information in at all. And I'm going to go in here to edit site. Um, but you know what? Let's actually let's start here just so you can see kind of the ease of which to get started. You hit the Get Started button. And right away, it asks you what the purpose is of your website. Photography, next. Are you going to sell, publish a blog? Let's just say I'm going to publish a blog and showcase my work and expertise. And what stage are we in? We are uh, formalizing an idea or personal project. And so then it shows you these themes. And Squarespace has, without a doubt, the greatest number of themes available. So this is just the themes within blogs and podcasts. But if we went up here to the photography section, then you have additional themes, quite a few. And that, you're just because you're a photographer doesn't mean you're limited to the photography. Maybe you want to actually just look at the portfolio themes. And so we have all of these really nice themes. And Nevins was the one that I chose. Very nice, very clean. But this Matsuya looks pretty good as well. And you hit Start, and it builds it for you. You got to log in, and that's where you start the, the free trial. And that now brings us back to kind of where I'm building here in this uh, site. It pops up with this little assistant on the right and walks you through. And this is new to this version. They didn't do this even just a couple of months ago, where it kind of walks you through doing these different tasks um, and gives you step-by-step -step information. So without a doubt, the most customizable, the most themes to start from, and um, just really nice-looking themes. Uh, $12 a month, but if you start to want to add in the other stuff and the other features, it does get a good bit more expensive and does offer the most number of additional features. You can password protect galleries. You can add a scheduling service built in so that people can say, hey, I want to hire you for shooting my, um, you know, my wedding. Are you available on July 27th? Boom, July 27th can come up on the calendar and they can see whether or not you're booked for those dates and can you know inquire about that and, and follow through on all of that. So really, really kind of um, pretty impressive and quite nice uh, and something to take a look at. If I had to make a recommendation of just one, if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, Adobe Portfolio is where I would certainly start. Um, if you want a little bit more, I really liked how clean and simple Pixie Set is, but it does start to get pricey pretty quickly. If you're looking for a place to put lots of your work and showcase some of it, Zenfolio or SmugMug, I tend to like Zenfolio a little bit more, although I'd like to see them update their themes, is another option as well. So. Um, Trelina says she loves Squarespace themes. They're also clean and modern. It's true. They're very nice, very clean. They, they are modern, um, and I like them a lot. I was pretty impressed with Pixie Set, and I thought Adobe Portfolio did a pretty good job of looking pretty modern as well. 
Zenfolio. I'm going to reach out to them because I think I really like a lot of what they do, and I'd love to see them um, become a little bit more cutting edge on that end of things as well. So uh, a couple of questions, and then we're, we're going to review a couple of websites that you all sent. Can you sell from the site, the Adobe one? I don't believe you can sell directly from Adobe. Um, under integrations, you can integrate it to, and you're talking about to clients, um, I assu assume. So that would be a downside to that. They don't have any options for selling your work. Let's just Google that real quick and see. Sell your work on Adobe Port. Nope, it all takes you to the stock. And that's not the way you want to sell your work because the stock work costs 25 to a dollar and things of that sort. So no, that is a downside. Um, that's a real strong side to Zenfolio because with that, what is it, 50 to 60 roughly dollars a year come that beginning packages of selling your work. Um, although it is more expensive quickly to do the kind of fully non-branded sales and also mark up your own prices and all of that stuff. So it does get um, tough. Marjorie says she cannot get to the left-hand side panel on the Adobe Free Stock. All right, let's take a look at that. So uh, Marjorie, when you're um, at portfolio.adobe.com and you're logged in, uh, you can say edit your sites. And so here is my site right here. You can create up to five, as I said. We're going to hit edit sites. And the sidebar just shows up for me once you are logged in editing a site. That's the key. Uh, I don't think this ever goes away. I don't think you can hide this. If you're saying view the site, then you are not logged in and the sidebar won't show up. All right. Let's go back here real quick to pages. And let's see if I click this little guy and set his home page. Yes, see, so now I've ditched this stupid splash page as my home page. Um, and now if I come back, update the live site, I come back to, where is my, why do I keep losing it? Uh, is it here? Yeah, if I refresh this now, I land here instead of that home page, which I like. Okay, can't get rid of the Powered by Adobe portfolio, I don't believe. So, you know, if you don't like your work branded, that's another downside to that. Oh, she just said she found it. What are my views on Wix? You know, so I I, I only showed Zenfolio as an example for Zenfolio and Smugbug since they're the same. Um, Squarespace and Wix are, in my mind, basically the same. I think they are incredibly similar. Uh, and um, I think Wix is, is just as good as Squarespace uh, for the most part. I do know the Squarespace's technical support because I've had to make use of them some is good. I can't say that for Wix one way or the other, but um, I really don't think they're any different. If you've got a site running on Wix that you're happy with or if you've got a deal for Wix, um, I would certainly recommend it. I know Steve Skirch uses Wix and he has been happy with them for many years as well. Um, yeah, good questions. Okay. Um, how do you purchase slash sell from a website? Does it go out to a vendor to buyer? Um, this is from Jamie. Or to me, then I ship out. Well, that's where the, the, the power of, of um, Zenfolio and SmugMug really come into play. Because when you pay at the higher tiers, you can set that up exactly. If a, if a client orders a print, it will automatically get sent to the print house, printed and sent to you. Um, and then you sign it if you want or inspect it to make sure it's great and then ship it on to the client. Or you can have it shipped directly to the client. You approve, you say, it tells you a new order has come in and um, you approve that order, make sure the cropping, they say they've ordered an eight by 10 and let's say your formatting wasn't for an eight by 10, you can make sure it's cropped right for that and then it goes directly to them. And of course you can adjust the cost, whether, whether or not it has to come to you first or whether it goes to them first. So those are options in both of those, but you do pay more for those. But the Zenfolio is really strong there. That's what I would recommend. And you can do that kind of selling through like say Squarespace, but that's where you start to get away from Squarespace isn't so much made for digital products sales or, or print products. Um, and you're kind of shoehorning it in there and Zenfolio really works well for that. So, um, 
Frank, can't you put your own selling link on your own page? Oh, certainly, Frank. I mean, you could say all of this work is for sale. Contact me. But that's very different than what Jamie is asking about where you want it to be automatic and organized and as seamless and painless for people as possible if that's a, a way that you make them money. So, yeah, you can always know. And, you know, the same thing, um, you know, on Instagram, you can say my work is available for purchase. Contact me. But again, then Instagram, you don't have any control over any of that stuff. So, um, all right, let's review a couple of websites uh, and then um, we'll wrap up. So I asked you all to submit websites. Uh, Squarespace makes it really easy to build forms and those forms can drop right into um, this Google Sheet where I've picked some out. And uh, let's go to Travis because he built his on SmugMug. And let's take a look and see what we think about SmugMug and the look here. So I'm going to log out because that was that 13 days left to subscribe is only because there we go. Uh, SmugMug knows that I started a trial service that I haven't done more with. Okay, so we land right away on a big splash page that is doing a um, slideshow. Love that Bobcat. And Travis has put some fantastic work front and center that just really hit you in the face that he's a good photographer and wildlife is clearly his um, what he really loves. And that's good. I like that. We got a search photos up here as well and an owner login. I don't love the owner login. I'd love that to be hidden, you know, because it's clear that this is built on Smug Mug and it doesn't feel quite as personal if it was just Travis's, but that's a little bit of a downside. All right, we hover over portfolio. We got landscapes, wildlife, bird juju. That's interesting to me. What is bird juju? We'll come back to that. Uh, the kitchen sink. Uh, notice that when some of these different images are in the background, the menu becomes a little bit more difficult to read. Not a big deal, but there was one other image where it was a little harder to see that. And we've got an about me and then another search here. Search is duplicated. And then down here as well, we have that. And see, there's an owner login down here. I don't mind that in the footer that's kind of full of necessary information. It would be great, Travis, if you can hide that up there. I don't know if you can. I also don't love, and this is one of the reasons why I logged into Smug Mug and started, it, the, the white box around these, it makes it feel like they just don't quite belong here. But that's getting pretty, um, pretty picky. So we've got a nice picture. I love to see the people behind the camera. If on your biography page you don't have a picture about you, I'm going to be disappointed. So Travis, thank you for not disappointing me. Um, I'd love a little bit. You've got plenty of room for it here. Um, I'd love a little bit more spacing in this text, just a little bit. Um, but you know, it's nice. Um, and you also say what the kitchen sink site is, some of your best images. You can also follow me on Instagram and you can find also find those images in the kitchen sink section. Okay. All right. Interesting. Let's go back and let's check out bird juju because as I said, that interested me. So now we've landed on this portfolio and, and see this does have a nicer and cleaner look in my mind than the Zenpol, Zen, Zenfolio kind of gallery page. Um, but we do still have definitely um, the Smug Mug branding around here on that. I bet there is a, a value you can eventually pay them that will um, remove that. And you click an image and you get it nice and large. Uh, it's filling my screen. It's still looking good uh, even at that big size. And I can close it or go to the next image. And yes, I can use my arrow keys as well, which I appreciate. And then we can come in here and we can see that you can buy um, these prints as well. And um, figuring out sizes and all of that is just built right in to this, including the cost. And it shows you the cropping automatically as you can see those come in and out as you mouse over. Pretty nice. Uh, really good looking stuff. Let's go to the kitchen sink for a second. I just kind of want to see how this looks. All right, we, on this page, we've got a header. If it didn't get deleted, it will end up here. And so, okay, so this is where you're putting basically all of your work. Uh, so not just what's going on Instagram, I'm assuming. And um, 
I'll be honest, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if I would make this public. There are some neat images in here, but there's definitely some messy images in here as well. Ooh, that's nice there. Um, so you run the risk of somebody coming through and being like, well, but you also have the uh, you know, ability to somebody get interested in one of these images that might be a little bit different. So I might, I'd suggest you be a little bit more selective in what you show here um, to the public. You certainly can upload all of these, but do you need to show all of them to the public? Cool. Okay. Let's, and let's see how the search works on SmugMug real quick. Let's search owl and see what comes up. 21 owl images that I'm assuming are all Travis's. Sort by photo rank. Let's see what your newest owl picture is. Cool. All right. Nice. Thanks for submitting, Travis. Um, let's go to Lisa's. Lisa Philan Photography. I don't know where she has built hers. We can sometimes sneak and see if we go to developer view source and look briefly on here to see if there's anything that shows Squarespace. Yep. So this is built on Squarespace. Um, and I like, we've got a nice little logo here. This actually could be a teeny bit bigger. I don't want your logo and, and kind of heading to take up too much room, but um, that photography text is smaller than your, your menu text. So I'd like to see it a little bit more. Um, and we've got some nice images here and it, they're a little hard to see, but right and left we have uh, buttons that allow us to navigate through images. So right from the front, we can see kind of some of the, the, the breadth of your work. And you've got, you've got quite a variety of work here. And so you might want to think about if your goal, Lisa, is really to get clients for your family, headshots and seniors, um, then that might be all of the work that I would recommend putting there. You can certainly have this link to other photos, but I'm not sure that I would put right here uh, this different work because it's just kind of jarring. Lots of nice portraits of people, and then you have those very different images right at the, at the end. I might even be a little bit more selective in this, although I think this is a nice group. And I don't see any shots from the same kind of uh, group. That's good. I want that uh, differentiation. And we've got these nice little links down here. They look like they belong, where you know they really part of this um, theme here. So if we go into family photography, um, we are okay. Same couple that I saw on the front, but a different pose. So that's nice. Um, and that's cute little baby mermaid. So these are nice, nice work. Nice images laid out, clean. I would, I would like a different view of these images uh, when I come to these other pages. The welcome page with this feel of sliding left or right is fine, but when I come to family, I think I would like to either see one large image and go one at a time or have a page full of those images and go on down, down that way. All right, and headshots are very nice series of headshots. Let's just jump over to information. If I click information, nothing happens. Okay, good, because when you have a call out or a fly out like that, I'd like that. Nice picture, Lisa. I like that. And um, look, it only took me a half lifetime to find my passion. Nice opening, letting people know right away that photography is your passion. Um, and so just nice little uh, bio uh, along with that picture right there that looks good. And then you've got your pricing, client feedback, and client galleries. Uh, you know, I don't know um, if these should fit under information, but um, I guess that's fine. Yep. And this is great. So four or five nice recommendations for you. This is a great thing to have your client looking, or if you're, if you're trying to get clients, um, and the client galleries a link as well. And I'll say this too, this isn't actually related to leases, but if you are out there trying to get work, um, it would be really nice for you to have a client gallery that you are comfortable sharing publicly, that is your a full and complete wedding or family portrait session or something like that. Because sure, you know, you could have attended a bunch of workshops, 
um, and then put together this gallery of images that looks like you are a fantastic photographer, but really the the whoever set up the workshop set up the lights for you and set up you know the models and there was hair and makeup and under those conditions you were able to take very nice pictures. So I think it's nice and important to do that as well and let people know those are available to you. And then on a pricing page, um, you've got your price out there. You might I might separate this in with just a little bit larger headings. Um, you, you have the notes here, I think is the largest text, but I don't know if let's talk money, but portrait packages and, um, maybe kind of set these, set, set these apart from one another in, in a little bit more detail, but, um, that's cool. I think you've got a nice website there. A little bit of feedback there. Let's just go to, is this person's name Tina Fey? It is Tina Fey. Okay. Tina Fey, do we know what she hosts on? Hers is post powered by Imagely, which I'm not familiar with. Imagely is a plugin, I think, for WordPress. Yes, it's the official home of Next Gen Gallery, now with automatic print fulfillment. So this is a, a package that you can buy and plug in with WordPress that will do most of what you want. Um, just there's a lot more work and setup, in my opinion, than running it on something else. But OK, let's go back. Let's not get distracted by that. So Tina, we land here. We've got this image and we've got our link to more. You know, um, Lisa, I noticed that you actually didn't have a blog. So again, take what I've said about a blog. I really think they're a great way to bring people back and for you to highlight and show that you're constantly or consistently producing work. Let's go look at Tina's blog real quick. Well, Tina, I know blogging is tough. I don't mean to pick on you. I, we just, if you watch this and you looked at my Zenfolio, I haven't blogged there at that location since 2014. Um, so you've got me beat here. But again, if you're really trying to get clients, um, then you want to do that. Although, you know what? Are you? Let's just figure out. And you, I did ask. Oop. I did ask you all to share. Tina, did you say sell and display my photographs along with making gifts for my pictures? And that part's still under construction. OK, so let's go into your favorite photos. OK, nice, clean look. Um, I like this image. What happens when we click it? We get loading. And then, Tina, I'm not sure I like how small that still is. Uh, this image is not currently for sale. Okay, that's fine. I really would love to see this show up in a larger format. I've got a lot of room around it. That's barely bigger than it is here. Let's see if it was just that one that we were, uh, okay. So maybe that one you need to make sure you're uploading. And this one is available um, for purchase as well in prints and mounted. Um, and you have your whole little cart system here. That looks quite nice. And we can go through, there's that one again. Cool. All right. Very clean, very snappy look. I like that. Let's go look. So you have your favorite photos, 20, 20, and you have newest photo gifts about contact. Let's see what it looks like if we go to newest photos. Very similar gallery. Uh, you know, they're off center here. Why can't we center them? I'd like that. Let's go to about. All right. Nice picture. Nice picture, I know. And a little history of you. I'd like to see paragraph breaks in here. They would make this a little bit more readable. But otherwise, I think that's great. And you've got some nice background about you there. And let's see what we get when we land on the contact page. Oh, that's a cool shot. Very neat. All right, and then your content, good. I think overall this looks this looks quite nice. Um, a little confused by the gallery having newest as a call out and galleries photos, but I think that's fine. All right, let's move on. We're going to do one more. Um, I think it's this one that I wanted to. Is it that one? I will get to more of these soon, but um, yeah, let's just look at this one. Um, 
Oh, this is another smug mug one. So we get another look at a smug mug gallery. Uh, actually, so let's not. Let's pick one other that we can see. Let's go to this one. Raching photo. Rachig. I don't know how you say that last name. I'm sorry. Um, it's very clean, very modern looking. I like a portfolio as a fly out. Shows me exactly what you cover. A little some diversity here. Real estate, aerial, which oftentimes is, is real estate related. Then sports, and then you've got your landscape as well. Services. Let's see what you offer and why that's loading. You said you're, this purpose is mainly for business, which is right now is real estate photography. I'd like to focus on landscape, drone, and photojournalism more in the future. And so that really sets up. Um, I'm sorry, what's your name? David. So David, that really sets up. Um, you know, you focusing and and focusing this website on what you want to get more of. So really, I would take off anything that you have uh, photos of that you don't want to offer in the future. Uh, and that can be difficult to close down those avenues of income. Uh, but um, that is one surefire way, or at least to really make sure you're highlighting the type of work that you want to get more of in the future. And maybe, you know, discounting some of that so you can build up the portfolio, discounting your service charges for some of that work so that you want to do more of that in the future. So when we, we clicked on services, we landed here. I, you know, I, I like this as part of your kind of logo and it's simple. It's your name. It looks good. I don't love the kind of cursive-y, uh, swirly text a little bit more on the page. Um, so you're definitely real estate and aerial is all of what's listed right now. And if I hit book now, um, it allows, it takes you to this uh, Square appointment scheduling software, which isn't the same as Squarespace. This is Square, that kind of point of sale system that you're using for that. Um, I don't know who you built this on, but it looks not pretty nice and pretty clean uh, and, and uh, consistent. Let's go look at your aerials in the portfolio. We had a little bit of a loading screen that's there for just a minute. And then we've got some images, um, just a few. Notice you've got lots of social media links, but you don't have Instagram, which if you have something personal against Instagram, that's fine. But I would expect to see that instead of Google+. Google Plus is a little outdated. Um, let's go back to our previous project of landscape. And then you have some nice landscapes as well. So did I end up, how did I end up down at that one? And if we go to real estate, I feel like that loading is just, a, okay, that wasn't bad. It's just, it was almost long enough for me to comment on, but not quite. And you've got a nice collection of real estate. Interior, not a ton of exterior. Um, I might like to see a few more strong exterior shots. Um, you did have a few of those in the aerial. Uh, I think it would be fine to put those in here as well. Um, just to highlight those type of shots and have a little bit more diversity in them as well. And then the about us. Oh, there you tell me how to pronounce your name. Rockway. That's nice. Uh, I appreciate that. And um, again, nice resume here. We remove the hassle of having to schedule shoots with out-of-town companies while offering you the same cutting-edge technology and services. So really emphasizing the fact that you're a local business and that that's strong. Um, we strive to be more than just photographer and agent. Uh, uh, between a photographer and agent and live listing. We work closely with you. We're located in Dallas, Texas and service the entire area. One of the other things that, that I haven't mentioned till now that Rockaway, David Rockaway's um, bio really makes me realize uh, is important to remind you is that this bio is written in a way that it's SEO friendly as well. You were saying you're highlighting key words that you work with, beautiful images, realtors, interior designers, architectures, and you have your location. This is going to help your website come up in the search results. So that's good. I like that. Um, and that's something else that you should think about when writing your own bio. All right. Those are great. I will come back to some of those additional ones 
at some point in the future. I really appreciate people sending those in. I want to get a couple of questions before we wrap this up. Um, Angela says, I like the globe light back there. Thank you, Angela. But where's Pixel? Where did Pixel go? I don't remember. He's right around here somewhere. The other day I cleaned and he got distracted and walked off. So that's where he is. Can you sell slash print on demand from Squarespace? I don't think you can. You can, you can easily sell from Squarespace, but it's not going to automatically go to a print lab and do all of that on demand print and the nicely that Zenfolio and SmugMug make very, very easy for you. And some others as well, Pixie Set as well, when you pay for the higher amounts. So that is a downside to Squarespace. Um, how about video uploading embedding for photographers that also do videography? Great question. Uh, many of us are asked these days to be multimedia experts and also have video. Zenfolio and Smugbug both handle video very, very nicely. Squarespace does as well. I don't know about Pixie Set. Um, and what was the other one? The Adobe Portfolio. Adobe Portfolio will certainly take video as well. Um, that's uh, you can you can put video up as well, but again, somewhat limited in, on those. KDO eighty eight says, "How about how to best optimize SEO and Google improve search results?" So, I just touched on that. That's a good question. One, your bio needs to be thoughtfully written, not only from the standpoint of being nicely readable by humans, but also really highlighting those keywords, services, and locations for you. You also need to make sure that every page has keywords and categories. Uh, Zenfolio and SmugMug both allow you to do lots of behind the scenes SEO. And I highlight those two because you might not think that's true of a gallery service, but they do. They recognize that many photographers are building their websites on their services and they need to be SEO friendly, um, making it easy for you. Adobe Portfolio has those options in the background of making sure you are tagging and keywording the pages and writing nice descriptions of the pages and the content. So again, you're hitting again and again those keywords. And then it comes down to the blog posts. Those blog posts are, what are, are going to be, for so many of you, what's probably going to come up before much of the other content on your page. Um, and because of the timeliness of it. And that's where you can highlight again and again, oh, I shot a wedding down at, you know, St. Mark's Chapel on First Avenue. It was a beautiful wedding in July. The weather was perfect, yada, yada, yada. Those are going to be great keywords that are going to get pulled up as somebody else is saying, I'm getting married at St. Mark's Chapel. Um, and boom, your content is going to be pulled up there. That's the example I could give you. Gordon asks, when we upload photos to the website, should we give it a unique name? Uh, Gordon, I mentioned this at the beginning, and I might have only really just kind of glanced over it, but the renaming of your files. When you export, I think if you've renamed your files to something intelligent on import, that you're good to go with that export name. And if you look, um, if you look, if I pull up my travel and I come in here, and I can see that I've nicely named these Cambodia, Cambodia, Vietnam. I actually all have them in the Vietnam folder. But so they have the name in them. And when I pulled together another folder of my best of my best, at a glance, I can tell what these files are going to hold. So they become useful and readable for me, except for that one somehow I missed. But Arctic McKay trip, a New Zealand, another Arctic safari. Um, those are useful image names and they are going to be unique and go up to the website and be somewhat unique and maybe in certain circumstances help a little bit with SEO. But that's good. The um, thing you might want to think about if you're delivering images to clients, and I've talked about this before, when you export, you can export a sequence. So you might want to give an uninterrupted sequence to your clients. For instance, if you export the images as they are, you know, the Kate Charles wedding, 00, you know, DSC 0518. And then the, Kate, the next image you give them is Kate Charles DSC 0522. What happened to 19, 20, and 21? Well, that was pictures you took where Uncle Bob had his mouth open and looked like a, didn't, they weren't photogenic. Let's just say that. And so um, then 
your client might say, hey, I want a couple more pictures. You know, I saw you've taken pictures of Uncle Bob. Do you have those? I see that there's a couple missing from the ones you've given us. And um, that can then cause some issues. So if you export out Kate Charles DSC 001, 002, then you're delivering what looks like a complete set to them and they can cause less issues. I don't know how much of a big deal that is, but it's kind of nice from a visual standpoint. As far as just uploading to the website, again, I think unique names can help a little bit, but they aren't necessarily required if they're going to different buckets and different folders. All right. So. Oh, and Gordon, you meant I meant each photo being named. Like, should you put a little caption or a little text under it? That is really up to you and up to the theme and the display you choose, but it certainly can't hurt to show where these pictures were captured and maybe a tiny bit of information about them because, again, that makes them searchable. You, for I think all of us who are putting our work out there on a web somewhere, want people to see it, right? That's why we're putting it there. So not only do we expect to send it out to our friends and family? Mom, look at all these beautiful pictures I captured. But wouldn't it be nice if Google picks it up from time to time? So if somebody's searching for the Grand Tetons, wouldn't it be kind of cool if your picture came up? So naming them, captioning them will certainly help with that. And yes, I'd say it. Can you show examples of Zenfolio versus Square from the review sites? I don't know what you mean, Jamie. We're going to skip that for now. All the places I will go says, should you resize your images like you need to do for Insta slash Facebook so the files aren't huge on the site? That's a good question. And I kind of addressed that early on, Kristen. Um, if you are uploading to Zenfolio or SmugMug, no. Give them the absolute highest quality because that's kind of a backup for you. And they very nicely make the smaller sizes and serve them up. If you are building a website like Squarespace or one of the other that is tr more of a true website, you should be very thoughtful and walk that fine line and resize nicely for the images. Generally, Squarespace recommends that no single image is above 500 kilobytes, which sounds kind of small, but you can get there pretty easily and still have a decent resolution. Dep depends on how big you want. And that's also another way to protect your work from being stolen, not to upload it at a crazy large resolution so that it's not accessible at a crazy large resolution for people to download or screenshot. And you can control all that on the back end of Zenfolio and SmugMug as well. So that information is there. So Jamie says, so it sounds like you don't just set up a website. You need a domain, SEO, and some other things. How do you get those done? Oh, Jamie, the good news is it is so much easier than it used to be. The domain, I recommend Hover, uh, hover.com or hover.net. They're great. They set up a domain. And then when you go to most of these places now, like the Adobe portfolio, you can say, here is my domain. And then they walk you through what you need to do to connect. And the tech support on both ends usually is very good and makes it pretty easy. SEO, yeah, if you want to people to find your content, you have to be smart about SEO. And this is the thing. Now we're going down the rabbit hole of, yes, you're a photographer, but First and foremost, if you want to sell your work, you need to be a good business person, even better than a, a photographer. Unless you can afford to invest hundreds and hundreds of dollars, thousands and thousands of dollars in hiring other people to manage this stuff. Um, because you need to be a partial expert in search engine optimization. You need to be a partial expert in website building. That all takes time and energy. But it's what you need to do if this is a significant portion or you want it to be a significant portion of your future or your income as well. So, um, but most of these places, you set up the website and then they'll help you with the other parts. And for instance, Squarespace is actually even a domain registrar. You can register a domain through Squarespace. So when you go to sign up, you can be like, I want this website or this, this domain. And they'll be like, okay, pay us 15 bucks. We'll take care of that. And boom, it'll be all connected with Zenfolio and SmugMug um, and the Adobe portfolio, you have to register with somebody else and then connect it as well. So are the images on Squarespace right clickable? Barry Lee wants to know. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I'm pretty sure you can change that. Here we are on David Carr's uh, website. This is Squarespace. And I can right click on an image and save image as, if that's what you're worried about. It's going to be called Untitled 13 Edit. 
Poor David. He didn't tell him I was going to be looking at his website in that much detail. And now I've downloaded a nice big image. Um, it is 1,000 by 1,500. So certainly enough for this person to use as a profile picture. But that's not – David isn't making money that way. So I'm not um, criticizing that at all. Um, here's a picture of Sweeney. So we can say also open image and new tab. I'm pretty sure you can disable that as well. Um, within the Squarespace settings, but even that can be, you can get around that. So if that, if you're, Barry, if you're worried about, um, you know, that being a thing, um, even on sites that allow you to easily disable it, that disabling can also be disabled. Marjorie says, can I make a website for both photography and travel writing on Adobe? Absolutely, because Adobe, did I not show this well? Um, Adobe has a blog as well. So if we go to pages and I say I want to add a new page, um, create a custom page, I thought I thought there was a, a built-in. Let's just call it my blog. So um, I thought there was a built-in one. You could certainly say text. And then here I am. Oh, you're, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry. Here I am writing about my travels and adding photos to. And then let's say we come down here, a little plus sign. I want to add an image or a photo grid. I could upload files. So let me just pick like these three images real quick. And it's going to create those three images. And then now below that, I could add some more text and Oops, where'd it go? Here it is. Text. Uh, our Iceland September trip. Okay, you get the idea. So you can combine all of that on here. I thought that there was, um, you know, that's not a true blog because you were having to create each of these posts yourself um, and it's not going to automatically date in chronological put them nicely for you. So um, that might be another downside, but you can certainly create as many pages as you want and have that content all linked nicely um, that has lots of text, nicely formatted, lots of options there as well. Um, change the size and content um, and formatting all quite nicely. So the simple answer is yes, um, but you might want a more blog-friendly site as well. All right. Well, that was an hour and 45 minutes this time of content. I really thought I was going to keep this one shorter, but I, um, I like to talk too much. So I hope you found this useful. If you've watched this long and you haven't already hit that thumbs up button, I'd appreciate that. That's a quick, easy way to thank me for my time. And if you're watching this and you're not a subscriber, click subscribe. I've also got links in the handout and down below this video to each of these kind of places that I've talked about with um, Zenfolio and um, Pixie Set and Squarespace. I do have affiliate links. So if you're going to sign up with any one of those, there's a link right down below. Um, that, that would be lovely if you use that. Um, if you have a suggestion for another site I didn't talk about, and there's a lot out there, or build a website on, on WordPress, and you want um, everybody to know about a certain gallery plugin for that, put that in the comments right down below. That'd be great, because I think people are going to come along and watch this, the photographers especially, and they're going to find this content, and I would love some additional suggestions, because I really, there is a ton of more options out there. I didn't cover everything. And I didn't want it to go too long. So that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll be back probably next week with a Lightroom advanced topics. <laughs> now, I really enticed you to watch, didn't I, with all that stumbling over my words. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks, chat room, for following along live. I appreciate it, and your questions made this that much better. Everybody have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.